This guy, React Pro, made a video talking about an interview question. I didn't watch the video, but somebody sent me this video and said, hey, you should do this interview question too. There's this code sandbox link and it has a description. So let's get started. Let me run the timer. Welcome to the Meta React JS interview. Your task is to build a transfer list component. Transfer list allows users to pass items from one list to another. UX has provided a mockup. Should consist of two lists with directional action buttons. Click one or multiple items and move the item to the other list by clicking the action buttons. Okay, there's a PNG file here with a mockup. So I can see there's one list on the left, there's a presumably empty list on the right. And if I check number one here and then press this right arrow, I assume one will appear on the right. And I assume it'll be unchecked when it goes to the right. And then when I check it on the right and then press the left arrow, it'll go back to the left. Now, either it can go on the top, it can preserve the order it was originally in, or it could always put it at the end or something. That's a design decision that will affect what possible options we have. Um, so that's interesting. There's also the case of if I have one, two here, and I have three, four here, and I check all of them, and then press a button, what happens? I don't know. Well, maybe just tr play around with it and see. This is supposed to be done with React. I'm not really a React guy, so I'll probably have to look up things. I've used React a little bit, but... So let's start by just making the UI. App data index. So I assume I need to do my stuff in app. So I think uh, it, the instruction said, build a transfer list component. That's, so I got to make a separate function. So let's, oh, why didn't it? Okay, I should open this and that. Okay. Is there a way to put this at the bottom? What? It crashed? Oh. I don't know how to put it at the bottom. Well, we're wasting time. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we're trying, okay, so we would want function double list. We're going to call the component double list. And then we're just going to double list. It's kind of pointless, but whatever. So we need, we need uh, three columns. So one column is going to be the left column. Left. The middle column is going to have two buttons, which is, uh, no, you can't do that. You have to do a less than and button greater than. This editor is weird. You hit enter and it doesn't enter. Okay, we got our buttons and then div right. Now these are lists, so I'm going to use a ul instead of a div. And the items are li's. Okay, so we have a list of all the items that was in that. Um, data.js. So we have to load the data from data.js. Items from data.js. And if we just throw them in here, one, two, three, four. So I need one item per, well, one li per item. So item is an li, and we throw the item text in there. 
I would get a bunch of check, well, not check marks, but bullet item thingies. Um, now they need check marks, so we're gonna add the check mark. Input type checkbox. And then close label. Now it is clickable. Okay. And uh, let's just make a little component for that, I guess. Uh, where it has a label. Item label is item. Turn label. Okay. Now, uh, we need to do stuff when you click the right button, for example. So let's add a move to right function, move to right. Okay. And what the move to right needs to do is look at everything that's checked. So how do we look at everything that's checked? Well, there's several options we could have we could enumerate all the DOM nodes. To enumerate all the DOM nodes the right way, you have to use ref. Um, seems kind of dirty. Another way is every time you check an item, you add it to a set of checked items. Uh, and that would be a React state. Uh, that's another option. Uh, we could also, I guess, query a forum. You could do a use ref on a forum. We would have to give unique IDs to unique names to everything. Um, but if mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what do I think? Use ref. Use ref on each checkbox, use ref on a form or react state. I guess react state is probably going to be the most popular option, most understandable by other people. Uh, but then you have to worry about state synchronization. I also realized I forgot key on the item. I need to have a key on the item. There's some console log things. Each child in a list should have key. I have that. I guess that was old. Okay. Yeah, how are we going to do the checkbox state? Uh, and then how do we, I guess we can use the index. How do we identify each item? Right now, we're getting items from this data.js. We can use the index. We can use the label. I guess we're not told what is relevant in terms of the what's the uniqueness of the thing. It's not clear. Um, I guess I could just use indices for now, and then we probably need to change it later. Um, so we can call that the ID and the ID is the index. Okay. Now, uh, each checkbox, I guess we'll just do a on changed, uh, change. Wait, what's on change is not oh, the change. So let me just make sure this works. Uh, if I click ASDF, okay. And can I log the events? Synthetic events. I can probably ask if it's checked or not by saying uh, event.target.checked. 
Is that going to work? True, false. True, false. That looks right. It reacts to keyboard events too. So event target checked is probably what we want. So we would have on uh, checked changed. So on checked changed. And we give it the ID and we give it the whether it's checked or not. So on check changed ID and is checked. And we have to pass that function here. Okay. So now we can maintain a set, for example, um, a set of what all the things that are checked. Or it could be a map from the ID to is it checked or not? Or a list of everything that's checked instead of a set. We'll do with a list or an array rather. Because, I don't know. Uh, checked IDs, set checked IDs is use state. Now I have to import use state, I guess. Import use state from React. At the import seems so. So checked IDs push ID. Well, actually, we need to say if you're checked, add it. Eh. Else checked IDs. You gotta remove it. Oh, you can't just push because we gotta do React -y thingies. Set checked IDs. Do this stuff. Old checked IDs. Okay. Let's say new checked IDs is old checked IDs filter. This is the thing that stinks about React, isn't it? So we're removing all of the, we're removing the checked ID, and then if you're checked, then we add it again. That should handle all the cases, I think. I'm regretting not using the ref solution, because the ref solution would handle all that for us. Um, anyway, set checked IDs, return new checked IDs. And then we're going to log, actually, we'll, when you click the button, we'll log what's checked. Okay. So now, uh oh, this isn't working. Oh no. Oh, because I'm not clicking the button. Duh. Move to right. Okay, now we have three of them checked, and then we uncheck. Yeah, it seems to be maintaining the IDs correctly. Okay, and then we need to move them to the right. So, to see whether things go on the left or on the right, there's a few approaches. We could have two lists, one for the left, one for the right. We could have a list of Booleans indicating left or right. I like the list of Booleans idea. We could also have a list of IDs of things that are on the right. Uh, let's do the list of Booleans. Um, sides, set sides. Let me do a dot com. Array corresponding to items. So use state true equals right, false undefined is left. Okay.
So here, for these items, I want to show only the items that are on the left. So I need to say item index if the, well, let's call it ID. If the item ID, uh, if signs of ID is falsy, then it goes on the left list. And then if the, if it's truthy, it goes in the right list. All we got to do to move it to the right, well, actually here, yeah, we loop over all the checked IDs. And say, we got to do this again, set sides, old sides. New sides is a copy of old sides. And we loop, we loop through all the things. We say new sides ID is true. True means on the right. So now if we go, what are these errors? Is this my fault? No clue. Point sides is undefined. Oh, forgot to call return new sides. Doop doop bloop. Hey, it moved. Bloop. Bloop. Uh oh. That was not moving over. Uh why is it not moving over? Because I do a filter and then a map. That's a problem. Because when I do this filter, it changes the index. What I'm using the index is the ID. So I need to combine the filter and the map operations. I'll need to say if that, then do that. This isn't the best code. We'll clean it up maybe. I'll have to do something like that. Yeah, and then copy paste. Where's the reference error? Index. Oops. What? Index. No. ID. ID. What happened here? Okay, let's try again, move it over, move it over, move it over, move it over. It's all working. Now we got to move them back over to the other side. Move to left. We can just copy paste the code, right? Easy, we'll clean it up later, never. So set that to false. Mode to left. Oops. Move to left. So now we can move those over and we can. Uh oh. See, when you check items and hit right, they're visibly unchecked, but we still have our state variable checked IDs, which thinks they're all checked. So when you move them back left, they all move. So our Checked IDs is out of sync with this guy. Um, okay. It's making me regret using useState. So we could either continue using useState and do some bidirectional state sync or use refs. Like scan this approach and use refs. The reacty thing to do is this stupid useState. I guess I'll do the react way. Checked is checked. Uh, and then we have to copy paste this. Checked is uh, checked IDs includes ID. Okay. 
reset the app state. Check one and two, move it over. We didn't clear it, so they're still there. But now it's visibly, it visibly makes sense. Now the description did not say what happens when you click the button, whether it unchecks items or not. It didn't say. They didn't say. But we could fix that. Um, we could do some code cleanup now, and then we can fix that issue. So move to side. If you say move to side and pass in the side, we can just do that. And this can be move to side. Left is false. And this would be move to side true. Message is read only. Clearly, that means a right paren was where it wasn't supposed to be. OK. And then when you move to side, anything that you moved, anything that was checked, we would clear from checked IDs, which I guess that's the same as just clearing checked IDs. You just say set checked IDs to empty, right? And now when you move it, it clears it. Um, there's some duplication here. Um, we can make, uh, I mean, functionally it works. I don't know what else I should do here other than just refactoring code cleanup. Oh, yeah, we need to make the UI. So, duh. Oh, format of the code. Um, let's make the UI. So, uh, we need to get rid of the dots. The dots are because item style list style item none. Whoops. Style, stick to mapping. Oh, so I have to do it like this. I haven't done this stuff in a long time. It's just gone. <laughs> what? The style not work? No, it's just gone, gone. Great. Refresh. You mean list style? Okay, they changed the caps. Wonderful. No wonder people like Tailwind because it's broken. List style item none is incorrect. What must it be? List style type none. Okay, it's list style type, not list style item. Okay, that's gone. We have to add the border around the side. Maybe I can make a component for that. It's quite ugly. Yeah. Border, 1px solid black, All right? So we throw something in there. And then the border radius, one oh, M. Oh, it's not quite black. It's more like a. What color should I pick? Five five five. I don't know. Six six six. The magic number. 
And then I was to duplicate it up here. So maybe I should factor the code. I don't feel like factoring the code. I don't think that's important for the interview. But you know, we'll do that. And then we need to put them all side by side. I prefer using grid for this kind of thing. So div style display grid. Grid template areas is what I always go to. And it would be left buttons right. Then close the div. And then uh, this needs a grid area of left. Buttons, red everywhere, right? Oops. Why aren't they side by side? Why is there space? Can't I see the browser anymore? Okay, that's still not right. Why is there space? Is it left buttons right? No. Well, I'm doing something dumb. Grid template areas. Well, here I would just research <laughs> the right way <laughs> to do it. Um to make them side by side. Can I cheat? Can I just look at my website, how I did this? Blah, 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 blah. Grid, where's grid? Where's grid stuff? Header, grid. Grid template areas. Oh, they all go in the same double quotes. That's how it works. I thought it was slash delineated. So it's like this. Boom. Duh. And then you want to center the buttons. You put them on separate lines, probably. Make them thick. This. Uh, mm -hmm. Style is padding, what, like 0.5 EMs? That's a bit aggressive. Not 15, one. Is that about right? Well, that's about right. Then copy paste. And then we got to make it on a separate line. So let's just throw in a BR. Then we have to center it. Oh, centering. Everybody loves centering. How do you center a div? <laughs> I guess we could do a flex box, right? So then you don't need the BR. So uh, display flex. And then, whoops. Flex direction, column, no, rows. No, it's not flex direction. What is it? Go away. Flex something. I'm not a flex box guy. Flex, flex direction, column, row. Flex direction, column. There we go. Okay, and then uh, space uh, justify items center something. I, I always fiddle around with flex to get the line items. Okay, that looks good. Line items center. 
and then I'll. Isn't it justify items? Center. Justify content center. I don't remember the difference. Center. Then we need a small gap between the buttons. Right? Gap between the buttons. Um, we do that with a margin. How big is this gap? It's bigger. Uh, that was too much of a margin. Right, because it gets split because it's flex box, the margins don't collapse. All right. I mean, there's color tweaks you need to make, and these don't have the padding that they need. You know, just a bunch of small, styly things. I'm not happy with this editor flow. <laughs> Uh, what is this padding 2m? What? Oh, right. I could add spacing between the buttons. I don't know. I think this interview's the, the interviewer would say, "Okay, we get it." I think. I think they'd say, "Fine." Oops. There could be improvements, like if you have checked some items and then you move it. If I hit left here, maybe you should just leave them checked because maybe I just hit the wrong button and doesn't want to reset the position. You know, there's like user experience things that you might care about. I just don't have a good specification um, about this task. And then there's things like it just word breaks. If it's too small, like I don't know what they want. Probably should set a max width so it doesn't go too crazy. Maybe uh, I would make the click region bigger so it's easier to click the items. So now the click region is bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah, so also, you'll probably want to get the data out. Like, whenever they make a change, either there'll be like a submit button or it'll like auto send to the server. There's no way our component does that right now. Also, our component is hard coded to accept this items. So maybe we should accept items as a prop. Here, items is items. And we would have a callback, I guess, whenever something moves around. I guess we would have a uh, on changed sides is console.log, right? And there's definitely cleanup that can happen here, but whenever uh, we could just do a use effects. So whenever sides changes, we call the callback with sides, right? Um, missing dependency, yes. You need to depend on the callback in case the callback changes. So now, Well, there's useless array updates. We can optimize that later, but undefined, undefined, undefined true, because only the fourth item, and then there should be a true at the beginning. True, undefined, undefined, true. 
Um, there's considerations like if they change the set of items. We already talked about how the we don't have IDs for items. So if they change the items, what should the behavior be? Should it always go to the left list? If they add new items, if they remove items, how do we detect that it was removed? It's under specified, but um, yeah, I guess there's my solution. I don't like it. I think this checkbox state synchronization stuff, I don't like it. I think I would have been better with use ref um, on the forum. And then we can query selector all the checked things. I mean, that has its own complications, but I think that would have been cleaner than two way binding. Um, also, I probably, well, uh, I should also make a component to avoid duplicating this guy and this guy, or at least a helper function or something. Because that's a bunch of copy pasted code with the only difference being this, whether it's sides or not sides. Uh, similarly with these buttons, these left and right buttons, the styling is the same. Maybe I would make a CSS class for that. Or if we hate CSS classes, then I would make a component for it. You know. And uh, as I mentioned, there's opportunities for optimizations, such as uh, if they just click the button, we shouldn't send a on chain on changed sides thingy. We could say uh, if checked IDs is empty, just return old sites. Like don't do any change. So now if you click, I can't tell. How do I clear the console? Eh, moved. Now if you click the button, it doesn't do any redundant updates. Um, also, depending on how you want to use list, maybe we don't want a list of, maybe we don't want a list of all the sides. Maybe you just want the updates. It wasn't specified what the outside needs, outside code needs from the components. Like, do you send incremental updates to the server or do you send the final state to the server? Unclear. There's trade-offs to both approaches, but. Yeah, in a real interview, it wouldn't be a monologue. I, I would have somebody to talk to and they would be giving responses and telling me, am I going, not just am I going in the right direction, but also what I should focus on for the interview. Should I care about making these components? Does the interviewer want me to make these components to prove that I can make the components? I demonstrated once that I can make a helper component already. Do they want to see more of that? You know? Um, when I asked the question of should I use use ref or use state, the interviewer could have told me, oh, I want you to use use state, or oh, I want you to use use ref. Or when I brought up the use ref solution, maybe the interviewer wasn't familiar with what I had in mind, so they could ask for clarification. So a real interview would be a bit longer and also a bit shorter because there would be less of me kind of guessing at what the interviewer wants because I could just ask, but there would also be more just conversation. So that is my interview. Pause, split. And I stopped the timer a bit late, but whatever. Uh, my comments on the interview question. Um, I think the interview question does leave some room for interpretation. Um, for example, I chose one decision I chose was each item either has as a Boolean of left or right, but you could have done the two list solution and the two list solution has different consequences and different implementation considerations. I like that aspect of the question. 
I also like that the question involved not just DOM HTML stuff, but also some styling. Um, however, the styling was kind of uninteresting, but whatever. But overall, the, the, it seems very small of an interview question, and it doesn't have enough open-ended questions that I can see anyway. But I guess that's good because they want you to actually code something. So I'm used to more design interviews where it's more of a conversation. And if you have a conversation, you could talk about the trade-offs without actually writing the code. Because if you write the code, it takes longer to do that. So if there's fewer options, that means you could just get to the code. So if the point is to evaluate code ability, yeah, I guess it's a fine thing. But I mean... If you just took this code and said, this is representative of Stragger's coding, well, it's not. <laughs> um, I didn't do refactoring. But again, that goes back to, I would ask the interviewer, should I do refactoring or do you get it? You know, Do you trust my ability to refactor this code or should I do it because you want to evaluate that? Uh, also, in a... More professional setting, I would include tests for the behavior uh, and maybe documentation for what happens if if I move one over and then I move one back. Should it go to the end of the list or the beginning or where it was? That was unspecified. And if I check on the left and I click the left arrow, what should happen there? Unspecified. Um, I would have tests for those cases if those cases mattered. You wouldn't have dressed as a hobbit. True. <laughs> um, I'm also missing accessibility stuff. I don't know if the interviewer cared about accessibility stuff. No idea. Probably should have brought that up during it. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it, but I didn't bring it up. That was my mistake. Yeah, that was just a quick question somebody asked, and I thought I would make a video about it. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you learned something.